Yes, the themes of the conference are very relevant to uh, Central Asia, uh, how people can organise, often faced with quite difficult uh, conditions, uh, regimes which are not uh, so democratic, um, problems that were arising from the economic crisis. So the kind of work we're doing is uh, working with organisations involved in community development, which could be uh, trying to improve conditions and in increase voice for women, uh, vulnerable rural, dis uh, isolated rural communities. We spent quite a bit of time in the last year working with uh, disability groups in, in Kazakhstan, with uh, youth in Turkmenistan on a leadership program. So here we're trying to increase voice, basically, and improve the environment for civil society. Uh, another interesting project this year has been in the south of Kyrgyzstan, uh, where there was a second coup a year ago, uh, and uh, following on that, quite big inter-ethnic clashes, which left uh, over 400 people dead in, in the south of uh, Kyrgyzstan. And we started a project uh, researching some of the problems that remained after the inter-ethnic violence, um, training uh, or, or updating people's research skills so that they could look at issues like what happened to people who were injured in the violence, what projects are being reconstructed, what the government reconstruction is going on and where is the voice of civil society in choosing the uh, objects for reconstruction, what help has been offered to businessmen who had their shops and restaurants burnt out during the Troubles, and issues quite sensitive political issues like that, and working very closely with local government uh, to find out what, what they're doing and what they could do more. Has it been useful to be able to come to this conference and swap ideas with other people from all over the globe? Well, our region of former Soviet Union tends to be slightly excluded or, or not have opportunities to join in these global discussions. And if you look at the research about civil society at the global level, you find great big blank spots on the map. And Russia, China, Central Asia, areas where, unfortunately, historically, there's been much less interaction. So these type of opportunities and trying to improve networking is, is vital. But, but a lot of the... Uh, uh, NGOs both in Russia, Central Asia, are um, thinking about the same things, and of course they are reading the you know the internet and uh, and they are communicating in, in in many of the same ways, and they are uh, have, they do see things in in quite often in the same way, so uh, yeah these type of uh, meetings are vital, but we need to you know increase the amount of discussion, particularly as there is a sort of certain amount of antagonism between. Russian-speaking world and, and the West, historically. How optimistic are you about the ability of civil society to rise to the challenges that the world faces at the moment? I think it's, it's, it's a very difficult time lies ahead. And I think the um, civil society uh, has already begun to move away from the sort of simplified Western models and try to adapt itself to the situation of, post, of independence in Central Asia and uh, changes in Russia and, and so on. And um, civil society organizations and activists will have to continue to work with uh, the situation around them.